Okay, this is a very quick tutorial on the V4K document reader. I'm just going to go once around the park here, going clockwise, starting at the bottom left. First thing you need to do is obviously plug in your device with your USB port. And then you also have to make sure that you have the visualizer installed on your school device, which should come that way. The first thing in the bottom left is their link to their website for support and any other things you might need. Going up, there are filters here. We can actually do some pretty cool filters if we want to change the appearance. Normal is usually best. Go up to the next tab, and this is a quick focus. It'll automatically set focus to something if you want for some reason to zoom into something that is larger or closer than normal we can do that and we can zoom back out to something like the document itself and at the top of the device the little circular blue button excuse me is also a uh, autofocus so it kind of sets you back to normal if you go up again this is a kind of a warm look if you ever edited a photo you can create a warmer appearance versus a cooler appearance somewhere in the middle kind of is nice then you go up to the next tab and this is exposure for brightness if you run a really bright overexposed or normal again the middle is nice there you can lock that if you'd like now we can actually get into different aspects this is a little confusing but you can just experiment with the device that you have and you know how you have the document reader laid out you can just see if it actually fits your screen better zoom in for some things custom it if you want um, auto is always great because it kind of just starts at a reasonable level these different resolutions are also adjustable you can try to see what happens there that was my light in my room going off I kind of like mine at 1600 by 1200 you. So that's something you can play with there. Don't worry, you're not going to do damage if you toy with different ones. This is very useful. If for some reason you want to change where your perspective is, you can flip the document around by doing circles. You can also, if for some reason things are reading backwards on your Google Meet, you can hit the mirror and flip them back to normal or reverse for whatever reason you might need to. If for some reason you've put the paper in upside down on the desk and you don't feel like sliding it around, you can click a button and do that, whichever you'd like. There's a lot of options in here. And of course, reset is always nice too. Zoom is a nice feature. You can use exactly that to zoom in on certain things, move the paper around and zoom in on a specific measure or paragraph passage. You can then zoom back out, set it to where you kind of feel good. And then of course, at the top, you can decide what camera you're going to use. And if you have multiple cameras, which I do, you can decide between those two. There are also all the settings in here that restore to default is probably the safest, but you can adjust them as you see fit. Mode is interesting. It gives you a kind of a blow up view of the screen and the buttons, all of your tools. That's a little different than full screen, which is a blow up view, but it gives you all of your tools in one shot rather than having to manipulate the screen itself. Info is exactly that. It tells you about your camera resolution and what software you're using. These settings will be useful to most of you, depending on what you're going to do. And I'll just go down this quickly. You can do this on your own. Clicking on the focus or the snapshot, whether you want that or not, with sound. makes a little beep sound. Uh, camera settings. Do you always want it to go to one specific spot on your hard drive? Or you can always ask it where you want it to go. Same with the file format. Just use the default, or you can set it up very specifically. Live stream, that's something we're probably not going to use too often. You can also click to have this automatically open up and be the, your primary camera every time you plug it in. Snapshot functions, this is just a delay of how long it takes to take the snapshot. If for some reason it takes you a few seconds to get your hand over to the paper where you want to point, you can use that. Recording, this is nice because if you are doing recordings, I noticed a dramatic difference between normal and excellent under quality. So that's something you might want to toggle with. Um, and then, of course, the audio device, whether you want to use your internal microphone or the actual 4K's uh, microphone. Slow motion, if you have a need for that, you can use those settings there. Live broadcast straight to YouTube, you can do that as well. And time-lapse photography, if you're building a clay sculpture and you want to slowly, in art class, have them watch you work on it for the you know, past three hours and have it show within you know, so many minutes, you can do that. Open a new window is a nice feature for those that have uh, the need to, let's just say, freeze frame this picture. 
And then over here, you can see that I can move things around, prep them, get them ready, uh, or maybe you know explain one thing, flip it over, show page two, explaining to them that there's pages one and two. Um, so you can use that as you see fit with one or two windows. Unfreeze it. Now we get to the fun stuff, which is, as I just showed you, you have the option to freeze frame, which is nice. You can freeze frame things, and then if for some reason you want to make changes on your desktop, prepare the next page, you can do that. You can also do markup on here, which is an option as you have things free, frozen. Um, unfreeze. This is basically a grid view. It gives you a grid layout. It goes from you know, 2 to approximately 15 grids for those in math, or if you don't have lines on your paper and you want to create them. That's the grid view. So quick focus is right there, as well as, like I said, on the top of the device, the circular blue button. All right, under the settings here, you can opt to use either of these functions. The first is snapshot, which is nice. It just takes a quick snapshot when you're ready. Boom. And then it asks you where you want to locate that file once you do it. Uh, cancel that. You can also do the same with a video, which is what I'm doing right now, screen capturing, recording, using your microphone. Also, you can do that at slow motion, live broadcast to a YouTube channel or anywhere you want. Time lapse, again, if you're doing some kind of art project, you want to show them uh, how you've done a watercolor or a clay model. And then scan code, not that you're going to do any shopping, but if you want to see where your bottle of Pepsi came from, you might be able to scan the barcode in and look it up online. <laughs> Good. Text-to-speech, I don't really use this that much, and actually it's not really worked for me very well, but it has that capability to speak into this, and then it'll give you the written version um, if you need that. Not the quickest thing. Okay, this is a little bit uh, confusing, but I'll try to do it quickly and simply. Scanning a document. So you set your document out, you hit Scan Document, you want to create a PDF, so it asks you, okay, how do you want it to be laid out? I'm going to then click on the crop button, which right now is going to be bent to where I want it. You can designate it just by selecting the cursors. Points of focus here. Now that I have my region selected, I'm going to take my first picture of page one. Boom. Page one is done. Now you'll notice it's not completed yet. It hasn't done anything. It's waiting for page two. If I want to add a page two, I can drop in page two. Take the picture of that and continue as need be. Then once you're completed and you have all your pages scanned in, you're going to hit PDF again. It's going to say, where do you want to put it? I'm going to say on my desktop and hit save. And if all goes well, it's going to be a PDF on my desktop. When I open it, I'll have a very large page one and then page two that I created. So you just create a PDF, as many pages as you need. Next tool, magnify, that's always nice. You can basically zoom in on a specific location on the screen. If I wanna see what the wood flutes are doing in measure one, boom, there I am. Stop motion, which is just a capture of shot one. And if I had a second stop motion and I want to do that and then that and then that, basically I'm creating a slow screen captured presentation that I can then save as a movie and export it to my desktop and it'll play in a short video like that to desktop. Pretty cool effect. When we look at it, get this out of the way, it plays like this. It's kind of cool, like they do claymation. Awesome. And finally, split screen, another nice tool. If for some reason you want a dual monitor of yourself talking, how are you doing? you want them to see you completely, you can do that as well. And that function, go here. 
along the lines of split screen, you can also do picture in picture, which is a nice feature. You can put yourself in the corner there, and as you talk and discuss things, you can obviously display your image so they can see you as you're explaining things. Markup obviously is useful and you can do that at any point. You can freeze frame, do some markup stuff. If you wanna zoom in and say, hey, what's going on right here in this moment? Um, you can change things, you can erase things if you make a mistake, you can clear all. The same basic, basic functions as if you're using web paint or some kind of extension like that in your Google Classroom. I think that's pretty good for now. Enjoy. If you have any questions, you can feel free to email me.